Hey everybody and welcome to the 1044, a weekly webisode and podcast from the editors here at CCJ, Overdrive, and Truck Parts Service. I'm James Gillette and my co-host on the other side is Jason Cannon. This week on the 1044, we're taking a look at one of uh, Fleet's most infamous pinch points, the after-treatment system uh, of their their equipment and specifically uh, diesel particulate filters. CCJ this week published a three-part series on DPF maintenance, each of which took a unique approach to methods that can improve after-treatment and life cycle costs. Uh, Part one kicked off Wednesday with a look at coolant heaters, which preheat the engine, and preheating the engine to about 150 degrees before startup helps reduce startup soot and emissions by about 66%, and it also prolongs the life of the DPF. Part two in that series uh, published Thursday, and it takes a look at renewable uh, diesel fuel. Um, While not yet widely available, uh, renewable diesel produces almost 70% fewer emissions, uh, and with fewer carbon byproducts moving downstream, the life of the DPF could exceed that of the truck itself. Uh, Titan Freight, a 50-truck LTL carrier based in Portland, Oregon, has more than a million miles on uh, renewable diesel over the past nine months or so, um, which is a little more than half of all the miles the entire fleet has logged in that span. Uh, Company President Keith Wilson estimates that over that time period, renewable diesel has reduced uh, the company's um, emissions by more than 1,200 metric tons, uh, and he told us that his mechanics, quote, love it. Part three brings us to engine oil. The DPF collects upwards of 98% of all particulate matter emissions in the form of ash, which is comprised of metallic compounds that originate in engine oil, fuel, and some wear metals from the engine, along with dirt from the air that the engine consumes. Upwards of 90% of the ash that goes into the DPF is from the lubricant, and the easiest way to affect the role the engine oil plays in ash production is to reduce the amount of oil that the engine burns. Here's ExxonMobil commercial vehicle application engineer Paul Sagala, who's going to tell us a little bit about oil consumption, which he says is the key to reducing engine oil-related soot. So making sure that the oil is staying in grade, it's not thinning out, it's not being diluted, uh, and if the engine's being properly maintained, you, you know, oil drains are being done um, as specified uh, by the OEMs. Uh, and then, you know, making sure that your consumption is kind of in check. Uh, but excessive consumption will, will definitely cause some um, issues with after treatment systems in the long run and affect the life. Um, the, the, big thing, the big thing that I see, Jason, is when you do a conversion or a, or a customer's out, you know, looking at different engine oils, They'll say, oh, wow, we changed over and now we see all this consumption. Well, what was it before? Right? Do, you, do, do they keep really good records? You know, the, the fleets that <clears throat> have some kind of a maintenance program in place are, are keeping really good records on consumption. So they know when there's, when there's a change. Uh, but, you know, on a highway, you know, you get a driver that, you know, pulls the stick and looks at it and says, oh, I'm low and stops in and gets the, you know, maybe maybe doesn't get the same oil, maybe get something, you know, cheaper, you know, and maybe isn't tracking consumption. So it's something that you really have to, to keep an eye on, especially when you're looking at, you know, different oils or, or, or looking to make a switch. Uh, understanding how that engine is performing and the consumption at the start, and then do a comparison when you when you have made the change. Or at least have a baseline so that if, if consumption is increasing, you have an understanding of how much is it increasing. Duty cycle, idle time, stop and go driving, Paul says all play a significant role in plugging of the DPF, uh, with idle playing a very significant role. So, so what we try to do when we talk to fleets is, you know, making sure that what their what oils or what what they're trying to accomplish that we're we're recommending the the correct products um and and i always make a get an understanding of consumption and kind of understanding kind of where fleets are at and and how much of a handle that they have on there and we know switching to some lower viscosity oils say from a 1540 to a 10w30 you could see an increase of consumption and that could just be based on cleanup in the change of oils the reseeding of the rings uh but excessive consumption Will, will definitely cause some um, issues with after-treatment systems in the long run. 
Quality and proper fuel additives, as Paul just mentioned, are important, but so too are the ones that are used in engine oils. Additives are responsible for most of the wear protection and detergent in engine oils, but they're also what produces the ash. The changes that will happen inside of the engine oil are more around the additives, and that's kind of where the ash is coming from. So the phosphorus and the zinc and the boron and the moly, um, you know, that when they're consumed in the in the combustion chamber, you know, that's where you're getting your ash content, you know, into your exhaust stream. So manufacturers will change that depending on, you know, base stocks that they use um, or and to meet the wear tests, you know, set by the uh, by the OEMs. So viscosity change really won't have an effect. Now I'll say that kind of with a caveat, lower viscosity oils in, in older engines, you may see an increase in consumption. And, and typically we wouldn't recommend, you know, those, those type of oils in those, in those engines. They're, they're mainly for the newer generations of engines um, that, can, that can accept that. Um, you know, and not have any, any, um, you know, consumption or, or, uh, or wear issues. Synthetic oils also use a higher quality based stock, which can help uh, inhibit consumption, but it's not a magic bullet and neither is a change of viscosity, especially if you're making these changes blindly. Paul has some thoughts on how carriers can make more informed decisions through engine oil analysis and simple record keeping. Is, you know, use oil analysis uh, plays a huge role in getting an understanding of the condition of the engine oil, be it you know uh, oxidizing uh, or drop in viscosity, fuel dilution, contamination, you know all of that plays into effect. If if you have a, a fleet and you're you're kind of running what I call blind without doing used oil analysis to get an understanding, you know it's it's really kind of hard to um, you know help a fleet um, maybe solve some of their problems. I mean just just imagine you get excessive fuel dilution in there, you drop the viscosity, not only the excess wear inside of the engine, that oil now will start going past the rings, will end up into the you know, combustion chamber and eventually into the after treatment system. So making sure you're keeping a check on that um, to me is crucial. Uh, and it, I, I really find it hard to believe that a lot of fleets you know, small, medium, and even some larger ones don't take the opportunity to at least pull a drain sample to get an understanding of what's happening in their equipment, you know, even, even as a spot check. If you missed any of this week's three-part series, check out ccjdigital.com where you'll find it all in depth. Um, as always, you can find the 1044 each week on CCJ's YouTube channel or in your favorite podcast listening app. If you've got questions, comments, criticisms, or feedback, otherwise, please hit us up at 1044trucking at gmail.com or give us a call 404-491-1380. Until next week, everybody stay safe.